Hello everybody, my name is Matthew. Joining us once again on another episode of Jupiter's Croc here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel is Ronan. Mongrel on Mongrel! I missed that guy. And Steve? Yeah, we're off to a strong start on this one. <laughs> now we are yeah. going to talk this week, uh, episode 4 of Spartacus War of the Damned, Decimation. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, I'll just go ahead and say it. I, this is easily the best episode that we have seen this season. Uh, I will spoil that for everyone right now. But this is this is a trip, and I'm I'm looking forward to having Steve try to explain in minute detail the plot of this episode. You see, I could have I could have done that if we recorded on Friday when we planned to record no. this. After bitch, I had just bitch, watched bitch. it, man, but man. someone, someone—it's it, it, weird that it's always the same person that does this. Uh, yeah, we're now, we're now two days later, and so I'm going to be needing you two to help me fill in some blanks on this. We might have to do our own decimation at the end of this episode to try to. Uh, we will kill you know, one tenth of Ronan. <laughs> yes, we will take a leg from Ronan. Uh, but yeah, so Steve, let's let's do your best here. Uh, All right, take uh, it away. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I have to split this into like the gladiator side of the story and the Crassus side of the story because once again, those two things do not really interact all that much. So, what, what do you want to start with? Do you want Crassus first or Spartacus first? Crassus got to go last. Crassus got to go last. All right. Thing, yeah. All right. So, uh, at the start of the episode, uh, Spartacus and. Uh, are, new new slaves are just constantly like entering uh entering the city and, and there's even even with the pirates there is not enough food to go around especially since uh Spartacus meets with Heraclio and Heraclio is like look man it's winter time like no one's shipping grain anymore like they've already got the grain they need like they're shipping stuff they're like wine it. uh and so Spartacus so Heraclio like he's trying but he can't you know, meet the high demands that Spartacus has for how much food they need. Uh, this is not helped by the fact that every day, like, like word has gotten out that Spartacus has taken over this town, and so new, new runaway slaves are arriving daily to to try to get into this Spartacus-led city. And they, Spartacus is essentially being overwhelmed, and uh, like Saxa and Agron, and basically all all of the, kind of the the high ranking. Uh, rebellion leaders are you know trying to monitor this influx they're making people surrender their weapons when they get in nobody uh, wants to feed the romans that's a nope. big point too yep. no one feed wants the romans they're like hey the, the food should be for us not for these losers <laughs> not for not for all six Ro it, it's this is a weird inconsistency with the show in general and that like yeah, like, we, we're never really certain how many people Spartacus has with. I understand this is a budgetary thing, but, you know, it, it appears as though there's only, like, you know, tops 10 Romans, and then later on it's like, oh, no, no, it turns out there were plenty of them in the city. There were, there were still enough for quite a bloodbath. But it's yes. uh, but it it, uh, it it jumps back and forth. So, but we, the audience, only see, like, okay, well, there's like, there's like 10 of them. What's the big fucking deal? But apparently, no, there's a ton of them, and we're just supposed to be... We gotta use our headcanon, is what we well, gotta They do. took over an entire city. One would stand to reason that there's yeah. gotta be at least a few thousand, at the at the bare minimum, Romans in there. One would think, but again, what we're, whatever we're shown at any given point is like four or five. Again, this is a budgetary thing, and this yeah. happens. This happens all the time. It's why whenever, like you know, like Spartacus and his, he always has always has to choose a crack stri strike force of three gladiators to murder, you know, hundreds of Romans because the budget won't allow for it. Anyways, these these freed slaves are being allowed in. They have to give up their weapons. They also have to show their brand to, to verify that they were actually a slave. Uh, and so Spartacus, while this is going on, Spartacus and Crixus and everyone else are like, you know, what's going on with Crassus? Like, Crassus, like, he's not attacking. Like, any other Roman at this point, he, like, with the numbers that Crassus supposedly has they would not wait they would come and get us so why isn't crassus doing that uh and so spartacus is like well maybe maybe crassus is different maybe crassus is trying different tactics on us and at that moment uh, a fight breaks out of the gate and turns out several romans who were disguised as slaves tried to infiltrate the uh the city and uh 
when asked to show their brands, they they attacked and you know the they're they're quickly beaten down because it's only like a few few Romans. Uh, but then there is one one new freed slave that is just a going to town man. on a Roman. Uh, he is just repeatedly stabbing this now Roman corpse over and over and over again. Uh, and you know Spartacus and everyone's like, well, we appreciate your enthusiasm, uh, but <laughs> give us the knife. And so this this slave is Julius fucking Caesar. And it turns out the reason that uh, Crassus prevented him from shaving is because they wanted him to look kind of scruffy to better fit in and infiltrate uh, to infiltrate Spartacus' city. So think back to that. Like back in episode one. Craxus told Caesar not to shave. Like this has been Crassus's plan from the beginning. Yeah. Like he he knew that at some point I am going to need a spy. Caesar, don't shave because you're that spy. Uh and so Caesar gets in and uh they they tell him like you know we you know we we, we saw what you did, but yeah, you know, we still have to be safe, so show us your brand. And Caesar says, uh well, I can't because I cut it off. And he lifts up his his Roman pants dress thing and shows him that there is a chunk of skin missing on his inner thigh. And so, like, a couple episodes ago... Cut back. Yeah, cut back yeah, a few episodes A couple ago. episodes ago, there was a scene where it looked like he was getting a blowjob, uh, but we, the <laughs> a audience... A blowjob. Yeah, we, we saw that the... <laughs> That the, uh, the 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 giver in this scenario was actually like cutting his leg, and so that was the plan. Like he can't shave because he's going to infiltrate. Uh, the, the, he's going to infiltrate the city, and he had to get a chunk of skin cut off so that uh, he could say you know, there used to be a brand here. So Crassus thought of like Crassus thought of like what would Spartacus look for in a spy, and. He would look for, like, person actually looks like they are a slave, and also there would be a brand. Crassus thought of everything. And so, uh, Julius fucking Caesar, who, who, what's, what's his name? Like, Lysiscus? Is that what he calls himself? I think so. Something like that. All right. Uh, so his, his, his fake name is Lysiscus, and he, he's welcome into the city, and he immediately, like, he and Nimites, uh, the scumbag Nimites, immediately, like, kind of go into business together because uh nimites uh he was basically like robbing people as they came into the city like he was telling the slaves oh spartacus doesn't spartacus doesn't think that we you know we're communists here we don't think you need to have money on yourself on your person donate your money to just the city and nimites was just taking all of that money uh and so Caesar saw that, and Caesar's like, hey, you know, I, I saw you, you know, casually robbing people, and Nimites is like, oh, this motherfucker is about to out me, I'm gonna kill him. But, but, uh, Julius fucking Caesar's like, wait, hang on, hang on. Uh, how about we start robbing people together? And so, uh, Julius Caesar has found his, his in, for lack of a better word. He is going to, to, you know, start working with Nimites, and, uh, you know, use that to uh, infiltrate the city. Uh, Nimites is an incredible scumbag. Uh, oh god, yeah, oh okay. yeah. You, like, He's you, real bad. There, there is. So there's a couple things with Nimites in this episode. One is he's drinking with Caesar and his men somewhere, and Cre and Crixus comes in and says, uh, um, you know, I, I, what, what do you think of Lysiscus? It turns out that uh, this is actually a setup. Like everyone is trying to play everyone else here, and Crixus. Uh, told Nimites to, you know, work with this guy and see, you know, do you think he is legitimate or not? And Nimites has been completely, like, taken in by Caesar. And so he's like, yeah, uh, he hates Romans. He's, he's one of us. Uh, and so... He's fucking Caesar. So Crixus, has act Crixus actually put Nimites up to, like, you know, inspect Caesar, and Nimites being the idiot's like, yeah, Caesar's legit. He's one of us. Uh, but then Nimites is, like, so mad that Crixus, like, showed him... Cause Crixus like grabs Nimites and like slams his head into the wall. <laughs> yeah. And and this, he's not subtle about it. <laughs> this was supposed to be an act. Like Crixus was playing a part, but obviously Crixus gives no fucks about Nimites, and so Nimites' feelings were hurt. And, and so uh, he vouches for Caesar, but then he's like, "All right, Caesar, come on, you and me, we're gonna we're gonna you know really test things." And well, there like, is th there's a Matt might remember this a little better because Matt's like you know, we know Matt's like a Crixus fanboy, but. Crixus, like, we're about to see something pretty horrible, and I'm not 100% certain that Crixus knew this was going on, but he knew that, like, Nemesis was testing 
these people. Oh, I, I mean, don't like think a... Crixus knew this at all. Especially yeah, with, no. with, he, with what, he, with he what impl happened... He impl no, yeah, with what there, happened a... to Navia, there's no way Crixus condoned this. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, like, except for again, like, you know, he's pretty, like, he's shown that he gives no fucks for these Romans, but... He, does, like, he, he, he would kill he them. Implies, he would, no, he, no, absolutely he, not. He, well, like, yeah, like, that's what I said, like, he, he is implying that, like, okay, well, you know, you, like, see to it that it's done, make sure that he's one of us. Like, there, like, he, like, to a certain extent, like, he is aware there is some form of test being done. Maybe he doesn't know what's about to happen see, or I, what he's been doing. I can't trust but either of you. But he is aware that there is some form of test. Oh, like, Ro Ronan thinks that Crixus was in on what Nimitz was doing a couple episodes ago. Matt thought that Corey was actually Weaselface's mom. You two are reading into things that are not there. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, my my boy Crixus would never condone something like that, Ronan, and it Agreed. is it, it it hurts me that you would even broach that subject and that question. Agreed, hundred like, percent. No, because I see through, like, because morally, Crixus does not have the ba the backing that Spartacus does. Crixus is fine with butchering innocent people. I genuinely don't butchering think, like, that. that well, like this, that, that, like, this yeah. is a step beyond. Last That's, episode, Ronan. Last episode, we we pointed out that Crixus had to pull Navia aside when she chopped that dude's hand. Like, what? What the fuck are you doing here? Like, this this guy didn't deserve any of this. If if Crixus didn't think that a petty Roman should get his hand then, chopped, a few. It, he didn't think that then. Like twenty minutes worth of episode time, and and like one whisper of, you know, we need to kill him, completely changes his mind. Yeah, the man is very. <laughs> the man's not that bright. I'm just going. To throw that out there. Maybe it's no, been I, very... I can't uh, trust. You, wait, wait, so you think no Navia way. would be okay with this happening to someone else? This that, particular like, not, not, thing that we're talking about? Not this particular thing, but like the butchering of these people. She's the one who puts him in, like, who puts okay, him into but that. Butchering is not what's happening to this woman. That's a, there's a there's a very small st scale here, considering how like you know what they've done, I, what they've I, been doing. I, to I these can't to trust this point. anything that either of you are saying at this point. Uh, <laughs> Nimitz going and get to the horrible thing. Nimitz <laughs> has so there's there's a slave that is being abused all throughout this episode, and he's saying like my sister, my sister, like I I I can't find my sister. I haven't seen her since you guys took over. Just please, someone tell me whether where my sister is, whether or not she's alive, and. Uh, uh, the, this like the, no one no one takes him seriously. Everyone like spits on him and beats him up. Uh, but then we find out what happened to his sister, and it turns out that Nimitz captured his sister and like locked her in like a hidden room somewhere that only he knows about. And Nimitz and his people have been going in there and assaulting her, uh, just using her as a plaything. And whenever they're done. They have a knife that they make a fresh cut on her. Like they're, they're like, you know, it's like a notch, off. A, a notch in your belt or your bed post, but they're doing it on her body. And so they, Crixus they, would not condemn. Yeah, the I, implication, the implication that they're do, that they set up is that this is part of a test. This is a Roman I woman. Know. If you want to prove to us that you are not a Roman, you have to go in here and but, do something but terrible. But Nimitz had already and then told give a cut. No, Nimitz yes. had already told Crixus that the test was passed. This is something yeah. that Nimitz is just doing to fuck around. He said he's good, Crixus. He's good. I don't, I don't know what I don't know where you're going with this, Ronan. But this is wild. This is out there. This is this is. I wild. have I have regrets about this of hand this of episode, poker. Cl clearly, my my memory of this episode is much fresher than yours. No, it I absolutely think it's more is corrupted not. Than ours. <laughs> yeah, what it's, the fuck? It's complete, it Ronan is, complete. is out here sullying the good name of Crixus. Unbelievable. Anyways, the man let's, does move, not deserve let's move the, the, the fuck on. on. <laughs> Nimitz tell, tells tells uh, Caesar about this and says, "Hey, do what you want with her, and then make a fresh mark." And so Caesar and probably like the best acting we've seen of anyone in this this uh, season so far since season one this is probably the best acting since season one caesar goes to this woman and this woman thinks okay caesar's another slave like he's going to hurt me but caesar tells her that like i am a roman my name is julius caesar marcus crassus is coming Julius fucking caesar he's Mar crassus is going to kill all of these fucking gladiators and slaves like you will be freed 
this is going to end. And the woman's like, no, free, like, it, the, 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 free I think, me. like, cre yeah, Caesar was Kill going to, me. Caesar <laughs> was going to just, like, leave her there. Like, he knew that it was, you know, he, he can't free her in the way that he wants to free her. Caesar, I think, was Not going yet. to, to leave her there and just tell her, like, look, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be dealing with a lot, but I need you to stay strong because help is coming, but not right now. But she says, no, free me. And she tells Caesar, you know, kill me. And Caesar starts crying. Like, he does not want to kill this poor woman, but she is begging to be set free. And you can tell that Caesar, like, he he gives in. He, he asks, you know, what's your name? And she reveals her name, which is the, the name of the sister of the slave that yeah, had been hunting that's, for that's a sister. That's a big turning moment for us. We're like, oh shit, it's her. And and, and Caesar's like, you know, I <laughs> your name will not be forgotten. I will get revenge on all of these people. Uh, and then he kills her, and he kills her while crying. And he is amazing in this scene. Yeah, he is so good. so good in this scene. Uh, and in the audio commentary, Stephen DeKnight said that when they did this scene, they specifically wanted the audience to uh, be conflicted as, as to kind of like what Ronan said on the last episode, right? Where you're starting to set up like, well, the, the rebels are the bad guys now, and maybe the Romans are the good guys. And uh, they thought that this particular scene was really like, well, you can't hate Caesar anymore. Like, that he comes across as brash and arrogant, getting cocky and kills people. It's like, after something like this, you can't really hate Caesar anymore. So now yeah. you're kind of like, who do you root for the rest of the series going all the way through? Yep. So Caesar Caesar kills her, and I I, I want to I want to pause the Caesar story there because let's let's talk about Spartacus. Uh, Spartacus is very curious about what's going on with Crassus because he Spartacus recognizes that Crassus he knows is he's a, different. Yeah, he knows he is different. Uh, Spartacus like Spartacus has repeatedly like attributed like his successes to like you know bold strategy like things that uh things that uh the romans wouldn't see coming and now he's got a roman doing that to him and so he goes to the yellow ranger and says uh hey uh tell me about crassus like people know people you know crassus's name is well known tell me what you know about him and she's excited like oh shit crassus is coming oh you are you're fucked <laughs> you're fucked out buddy <laughs> you are so <laughs> fucked so she is excited about Crassus, but Spartacus says, you know, tell me what you know about him. And if you think that he is so good that he's going to beat me regardless, then it doesn't matter if you, you tell me. And so she, she tells him that, uh, that uh, you know, I don't know much about him. Like, my husband only talked about him with, uh, talked about him regarding, you know, like, deals for food, essentially. It was just, you know, bargaining, negotiating over grain shipments is the only dealings we ever had with Crassus. But my husband did tell me a story. And in in this story, uh, Crassus was negotiating with a guy over something. Uh, some Crassus and this businessman were negotiating over some sort of uh, supply chain issue, and the businessman comes across a note, and the note was from from the businessman's competitor, and this note said that the competitor was going to offer Crassus better terms on the same on the same shipment of items. And so the businessman burns the note and just agrees to whatever Crassus wanted because he knew that he was about to lose Crassus's business if he didn't seal the deal now. And then later on, the businessman learned that Crassus himself had sent that note to force basically to force the businessman to agree to Crassus's terms. Uh, like basically he, he yeah, he sent like a a fake letter to to trick the businessman and Spart Spartacus, is like, Spartacus, Spartacus is like Spartacus is like, like he gets oh shit done, done done you can see the camera zoom yeah like, it, it, camera zooms in like oh my god I discovered a note from him I'm yeah. doing what he wants me to do Spartacus realizes that he got played like he like his uh, his assault on uh, Cassinius and Furious back at the end of episode one that's what Crassus wanted to happen so Spartacus like Spartacus had a hand in essentially promoting his new worst enemy to his, the new worst enemy's position. And Spartacus is like, fuck, we, we've got to, you know, like, Spartacus doesn't have a plan yet, but Spartacus knows that this is a different kind of Roman commander that he is dealing with. Um, shortly after this happens, 
Yellow Rangers like deception is uncovered. Like people like it's this. I think it's is it Agron that discovers this? I don't know. But someone it was it was it was the stalker twelve year old girl. Yes, she yes, Sybil. The Yellow Ranger and the Yellow Ranger drops a bunch of bread and like she's like oh well you, like you, you, I would prefer it if you didn't see any of the scooping the bread back up into the bag and like the girl goes yes Domina because she still has that kind of slave coding into her and the Yellow Ranger's like ah uh, yeah I, those titles don't mean anything anymore I've been stripped of everything I, you, you just call me by my name of Yellow Ranger so uh, yes so 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 Sybil <laughs> she, she leads... also tells her you need to embrace the moment and so she runs off to Ganicus and Saxa to tell them I've seen something very spooky, and then get, and so they follow the Yellow Ranger, and that's when they discover that okay they've been hiding the Romans under like, but Spartacus isn't there when where, like when this part's discovered. He's like right. this is this, right. this is a little afterwards. So so Yellow Rangers uh, Yellow Ranger has been discovered. The the Romans that she was protecting have been discovered, and. Uh, they ask, they ask Yellow Ranger, like, did Adius have anything to do with this? And Yellow Ranger says, no, I, I did this on my own. And Ganicus is fucking pissed, because now he knows that his friend Adius <laughs> died for no he's reason. he's been lied to. And yes, and so Ganicus... He lost a friend. Ganicus is about to go fuck up Navia. And so Ganicus tells Saxo to deliver these... To deliver these, uh, these Romans, Romans to Spartacus. To Spartacus. And so he runs off to go and uh, fight Navia, and uh, ultimately, like Navia, or sorry, Crixus and Ganicus end up fighting, and Ganicus gets up having to fight girl. both of them. <laughs> Ganicus ends he... up. Go ahead, Ronan. The... No, he, he has to end up fighting both of them, and does a fairly good job until Navia cheap shots him with a fucking rock in the back yeah. of the head. Ganicus gets knocked out with a rock. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and meanwhile, she pulls a Vegeta and knocks him out when he's not looking because he was about to he was about to strangle the life out of Crixus. And like the, he didn't want to kill Crixus, but the, but Crixus at this point, he's just stupid love drunk for for Navia. And the minute anybody says anything remotely bad to her, he goes into kill mode. Yeah, all so, I could like, think about in this scene was how fucking stupid it looked when Ganicus had Crixus in like what looked to be like the Undertaker's stupid MMA choke finisher when Undertaker was big in <laughs> MMA, like the Hell's yeah, Gate yeah. or whatever that thing yeah, was called. That, yeah, yeah, it's it's like an armbar thing, but Undertaker was doing it wrong because he's a wrestler. But yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but the Ganicus gets out of it and he's about to choke the life out of Crixus. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's when they so, hit him in the back. So the so Navia yeah, Navia knocks out Crixus, and at the same time. Uh, Caesar goes and reveals himself to uh, to Nimites, and he's got the dead body with her. And at first, Nimites is like, "What the actual fuck?" But then Caesar says, "Like, I couldn't I resist her furry. Yeah, I, I couldn't resist killing her. Like, I I just I I I thirst for Roman blood so much that I couldn't <laughs> help myself." Uh, and so Nimites is like, "Fuck yeah, he really is one of us." And then Caesar. <laughs> Caesar says, like, <laughs> why are we... Yeah, Caesar essentially has why to... Why don't we kill the rest of them? Yeah, Caesar doesn't want to... You know he doesn't want to do this, uh, given the context of the last scene. But Caesar knows to stop Spartacus, he's going to have to play the part and so essentially get rid of the hostages, uh, but not free the hostages. He's got to, you know... Caesar says, "Let's kill the Romans." Uh, Caesar and... knows enough to know that, like, okay, there are some, like, some of these gladiators, like, so, some of these were slave rebellion, like, ba basically, the guys who are most loyal to Spartacus are following the ideas that we're not going to kill these people. But he also sees very plainly that there's a large amount of those in the city who just want to slaughter everyone. So yeah. he does so the smart Caesar, thing and pits them against each other. Caesar is tonguing, Caesar is, is going to get all of the Romans killed in order to like essentially start a civil war between the uh, between the the Spartacus faction and the the faction that wants to kill Romans. And so uh Crixus and and Ganicus or yeah, Crixus and Ganicus fight, Ganicus gets knocked out. Uh, you know, Caesar and Nimites have revealed themselves. Uh, they they drop this dead body, and they're like, you know, hey, uh, wouldn't it be nice if all of the other Romans were in this state? And Crixus finally has had enough. 
Uh, Crixus and Navia have a moment where Navia, Navia says, whispers into his ear, like, we, like you know, he's wrong in this. We need to kill all of them. Like, yes, uh, this this is the point where I think Navia, is this uh, Navia understands, like, I can really use Crixus's feelings to my advantage. I th this is the point, at least where I, my viewing of it is like, okay, Navia at this point is using Crixus purely as an attack dog. Oh, I don't think so. I think I think Navia. Because even Crixus agrees that yes, Spartacus is wrong in this, but he's Spartacus. You know, we, you know, we we owe him so we much. Spartacus, we should do yeah. things his we, way. I don't we think we owe Navia... him so much. But at end of the episode, like spoilers for end of the episode, like it, like we so like you know we get this. Historically speaking, Crixus does break off from Spartacus, and like we we get that at the end. Of, it doesn't literally happen at the end of this episode, but we we get the foundation of it laid here, and it comes from Navia. <laughs> yeah. she, I don't. She, I don't. She, I don't think this is Navia using Crixus. I think Navia just genuinely hates Romans this much. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Steve. I think Navia. I, she's not trying to manipulate. Like, aha, Crixus. Let's let's get this. You know, like she, big, she's dumb, not strong, tricking really. Crixus in any way. She is just sharing her legitimate thoughts, and Crixus yeah. eventually agrees. Crixus is like, yeah, you know what? I kind of because he's always kind of agreed that they should not be dealing with these Romans and everything. I mean, Crixus has been that way from the very beginning. He's just always deferred to Spartacus's leadership because he's like Spartacus is the leader. You know, I disagree with them. He said it when they're in the tent, you know, and stuff, and they're they're hashing out their next plans. You know, Crixus wants to go do this, and Spartacus is like, no, we're going to do this. But he always defers. And I think at this point in time, um, Crixus has just been like pushed over the edge. He's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Th this is this is dumb. Uh, no one's listening. Spartacus ain't listening to me. Um, he's putting us in a dire situation here. Uh, Navy is right. Look what these assholes did to her. Um, and yeah, I I agree with her. It, yeah. We should also it should also be note because it's a small thing. When uh when they drop the when they drop the, the the sister character, her brother is right there and sees that she's dead. And uh, he takes the opportunity while the while all the fighting is going on. He he has the moment and he starts to strangle. Uh, what is it, Nemetes with the chains? And you can see Caesar mm, yeah. across from him. And Caesar, he's kind of playing. Okay, well, I've got this knife. Who uh, who who am I gonna kill? What what am I gonna? He doesn't quite know what to do before he eventually decides I have to kill the brother character, uh, yeah. like to help cement his bond. Like because you know, he's still got more disconnect to so amongst. Yeah, the, amongst he's the... he's the spy, right? He's got to make some hard choices in order to get the ultimate mission to completion, and that that is, well, I gotta kill some Romans. You know, I gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet here. I don't yeah, want to, necessarily, but I, I have I, to. If I kill maybe one or two of them, that ought to be enough, and then I don't have to I don't have to go along with the bloodbath that is about to follow, because people have already seen me kill! Hey, it's all good! Yeah. And the fight right. between Gannicus and Crixus was actually uh, Manu Bennett and Dustin Clare, according to yeah. audio commentary. It was like there was no stuntmen during that. And uh, the, the ground that they were slamming each other on was actually foam um, so that they wouldn't hurt each other because they're like, we can't, you know, have one of our actors blow out their back with, a, you know, Hell's yeah, Gate that, or whatever. So they, they usually <laughs> that's yeah, that's usually Hollywood style. If you're if you're going to have your primary actors doing like the bulk of the action stuff. You almost always, they're all, they're almost always going to be like, you know, everything's padded, everything, even, I remember back when, when they, you know, early 90s, when the whole billing for Jackie Chan was that he did all of his own stunts. He did all of his own stunts in Chinese movies. He did not do all of his own stunts in American movies because he literally was not allowed to. All right, well, we need, we need to make the decision to hurry the fuck up because we're on a time limit here. So, uh... Okay. Crixus, after after Gannicus has got knocked out and uh, Nimites and Caesar revealed themselves, Gannicus steps up and says, uh, "Do you want blood? Let's go kill the Romans." And so Crixus incites like a a massacre within the city's walls. Uh, and so the <laughs> the 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 gladiators and the freed slaves are going around and they are killing all of the Romans except for the group that. Uh, that's with that, Saxa. That, that Saxa is leading to Spartacus. Uh, it gets to the point where they are essentially the only Romans left. And uh, Saxa gets uh, surrounded by the other gladiators. And she there's ends up fighting. Yeah, there's this nice moment where two of these gladiators like, you don't have Gannicus here to defend you. We ain't got to listen to you. And then she promptly proceeds to stomp their eyeballs out. Like, just, just fucks them over royally. <laughs> yeah, 7-2 offsuit. 
All right, let's let's <laughs> let's get through this. Uh, Saxa, like Spartacus, shows up in the nick of time to to uh, to basically save the Romans and uh, stop this rebellion, uh, the rebellion within the rebellion, and uh, he and 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 Crixus have. Holy shit, oh I won. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! 7-2 seven seven offsuit, two. I believe! That, that, that wasn't even like you just playing them. You just had the legit better hand with the 7-2. <laughs> anyway, uh, Spartacus, res Spartacus rescues the remaining Romans. Not you know, and, uh, He doesn't get there in time to save the bread maker that got his hand chopped in the beginning of the episode. But he saves the other Romans, and he has a moment with Crixus. And Crixus says kill these romans like but like, they're reunited they're, there is clearly a divide between us kill these romans and mend that rift and we will be on the same side again and spartacus says fuck you i never should have given you a leadership position within the rebellion Ooh. and Ooh. so gannicus is hurt the the rebellion is split there is now like a pro crixus and a pro spartacus faction and and that is where we are at with the gladiators. So like real quick, final thoughts on the gladiators before we talk about for talking about we Crassus. cut through it. But there there is a training moment where Gannicus and Caesar fight. Uh, I, I understand we had to cut through it, but uh, th like th like like because th they're training these people, they're also trying to they're trying to see okay, well if any of these guys are Roman soldiers and they're trying to hide, we're gonna find out because soldiers like they're never gonna not take the opportunity to kill. And Caesar doesn't. Caesar throws the fight. But the explanation for how he was as good as he was, I mentioned this earlier on as to what Spartacus was looking for in slaves. He, he says, well, I was a shepherd, so that's how I know how to fight. I was Because yeah, shepherds were slaves that were given weapons, allowed to use them, and by and large had no oversight because they had to protect the fields. So, like, that's his, that, that's his cover story. I was a shepherd. I know, of course I know how to fight. I had to protect my master's livestock. Yep, and Stephen tonight said it was always the intention to show that Caesar could stack up against Aganicus, but yeah, he intentionally threw it in order to to make it look like uh, he wasn't kind of on that level. But once um, again, is... Crassus thought of everything because Crassus knew yeah. Caesar needs to look like a slave, Caesar needs to have a brand, and Caesar needs to have a backstory. Yep, yep, and Crassus did not tell Weaselface any of this plan. Like, yep. Weaselface knows and that's, and, about and, all right, Weaselface that's a that. That's a good lead in to talking about the Crassus side of the story, because there's a whole second narrative that we haven't even gotten to yet. Uh, so let's go through this. This episode's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> uh, so Weaselface is back at the, the Roman camp. He is having his wounds mended. Uh, Clubface comes in and says, uh, mentions that Caesar's gone, but no, none of them know what Caesar is doing because uh, none of them have uh, basically that much uh, of Crassus's respect yet. Crassus doesn't trust them with this yet. But then Crassus comes in and uh, mentions that uh, Caesar, you know, was sent to infiltrate the camp, and that's why he was denied a, a shave and a shower. And uh, Cra and Weaselface thinks that this is all going to be water under the bridge. Like, Daddy loves me. Daddy is going to protect me. <laughs> but then Crassus mentions, uh, we have to decide how to punish oh. your men. And Weasel's face is like, ah, shit. And later that night, uh, Crassus and Cory sleep together again. And Cory and they have a talk about Weaselface. And uh, Cory mentions that, uh, you know. Weaselface is trying so hard to get your respect, but all you see him as, as a, is a child. And Crassus is like, you know what? You're right. I should stop treating him as a child. I should start treating him as a soldier. And Corey has no idea uh, she what she's just what done. She's done. Uh, but Crassus says, all right, it's time for decimations. It's an ancient practice where you, you kill a tenth of your own army or a tenth of your you kill own by group. A percentage of ten. Yes, you kill a tenth of your own group, and the the other ninety percent are doing the killing. So you're you're making them complicit. And the purpose of this is, uh, Weaselface commanded his army to stand and fight, and then ran away. And Crassus says that means that you feared Spartacus more than you feared your commanders, and that's not okay. So I am going to make you fear Crassus by beating your friends to death. And so he makes Weaselface. Uh, he gets it's fifty people. And he gets, you know, 50 rocks, and he paints five of them white. And if you get the white rock, you have drawn the rock of death. And but so... got the short staff. <laughs> and so they, they, they get the 50 people together. I guess at this point it's actually 49. 
and uh, Weasel Face. Try, or, they are like, Crassus is forcing Club Face, who you know did everything right essentially, uh, to be a part of this. And uh, Weasel or Club Face or Weasel Face says to Club Face, let, let, "Let me talk to my father. I will get you out of this because you don't deserve to be a part of this." And Club Face says, "No, that will just like." further like lower yourself in the eyes of your father like i am willing to go through the process of decimation to support you and weasel face is very upset uh bro. but he, he's, a, he's a true club, bro yeah club face a club face definitely has like has a much better read on what you know uh, crassus is looking for than his own fucking son because yeah he's absolutely right like yeah like I, i'm just gonna take this one on the chin like a man or maybe to the side of the high, maybe to, maybe to the orbital socket, you know, so, somewhere <laughs> around that area. <laughs> All right, so uh, the decimation is happening, and then we go back to uh, you know, Weasel Face tries to like talk to his father a little bit, but uh, Crassus says, you know what? For too long I have treated you as a child rather than a soldier. It's time for me to treat you as a soldier. Join your men, and so he is going to force his son to go through the process of decimation. He's like, I'm your imperator, not your father. And so they all draw stones. Uh, Weasel Face is going to survive, but Club Face, the, the true bro of this episode, draws a death rock. And so Weasel Face, through tears, is forced to help beat his friend to death. Like the one good soldier within Hence Weasel Face's Club army. Face. <laughs> yes. He gets <laughs> clubbed Clubble in the face Hanks. repeatedly. Uh, and so Decimation has been carried out. And Crassus tells the, the survivors that, like, you you are going to go live in the followers camp with the slaves and the whores until I've decided that you are worthy of being a soldier again. But they do get to survive. And then Weasel Face goes up to Crassus and says, "This it's a, wes, it's a lesson well learned, Imperator. And so the impression you get is he no longer, like, sees Crassus as his father. He sees Crassus as his boss. And he no longer has any love for his dad at this point uh and that is what's going on with the the crassus side of the episode so i think we're finally done discuss there was a great amazing there, there's a great crassus line when he's like when he does get back you know when, when it's him and weasel face and weasel face is like trying to stand up yeah to, to let him to, to, to you know kind of try to explain himself and like when steve said was like oh yeah this is all going to be straight i'm not going to face any consequences for this and uh crassus does yell at him exp explaining why he's so upset and why he was telling him like you know you were not supposed to fight him was my he's command like, not fucking clear yeah, it's like now, the, like my, like you, know, my historic campaign on Spartacus for the history book, the lineage. My first battle with him is now going to go down in the history books as a loss for Crassus. <laughs> <laughs> we should start talking like this to each other when we play Fortnite. Was my fucking command not clear? <laughs> This this episode is amazing. Um, I, I have to put it in my top five of all time Spartacus episodes. I think. I mean, this is just this has all the drama that you want. This is like the moment of the series where you're like, our our heroes are truly fucked now. Like they are truly fucked. Like there's no way they're going to be able to get out of this. And every other sort of plot point throughout the seasons. I mentioned it's like what they do a really great job in this show is setting up situations where it feels like the, there's no way out for the heroes, but then they find a, a logical way or a, a way that you're not expecting that, oh, wow, they got out of this whatever way. This feels like the episode where that's now an impossibility. <laughs> like there is no narrative way they are going to write themselves out of this. And now we begin the slow descent of uh, you know the tragedy essentially the, the show becomes a tragedy of what happens to all of our favorite characters here um, and it gets real sad going forward it gets real real sad <laughs> I, did, I think because maybe there are some people who were like just watching this show and didn't realize that there's like there's some actual history to this and yeah and, and, and thought well you know it's going to be okay they're going to topple Rome at the end and don't realize like oh no 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 uh, th this is—they're they, all going to die and get stretched out on the side of the road. This is this is going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, I still think, guys, that House of Asher ends with Asher becoming Emperor of Rome. I'm that calling that. I I'm go, calling that might as right well now. go all in. Yeah, I mean, Do you're doing an alternate history anyway. Who cares? 
Go ahead, I wonder. I, I want. I want Caesar to be there. I wonder if this will. Because uh, back oh, when no. Spartacus originally ended, uh, the pitch for a continuation was a Caesar-focused show, and I wonder if this will be kind of like a like a like a backdoor pilot for that in some way. Yeah, because Caesar, Crassus, all of them would be alive yeah. at that time. Yeah, you yeah. Know, potentially any of the gladiators could, depending on how they write it, still be alive at that point. I, I I know so like it's it's spoilery but like there there's the there's some hope that like maybe one or two of these characters could have possibly been taken down off of their pikes maybe at some point and, and could still be running around like within the show like I, there's only I believe as far as gladiators go there's only one actual gladiator who survives the whole fucking thing and I did give that away at the beginning, like when we were reviewing the first season. I mentioned that a certain character is the one who's going to survive them all, the la be the literal last man standing. Like so, you, maybe like like if they did do a Caesar show, I guess characters have aged up enough to where it's like, okay, well now we have a Caesar who's an appropriate age to get stabbed in the back. Maybe I don't. Yeah. I don't want an appropriate age Caesar show. I want this Caesar show. <laughs> yeah, I, I say with House of Asher, they just throw... Who cares? Don't even worry about the actual history or whatever. Put whatever characters you want in there and just let it be a fun sort of alternate history sort of thing. Well, sure. I mean, at that point, because, like, yeah, you're now going with this, like, th this is a what... This is an Elseworlds story. It's multiverse, baby. The thing the thing Steve hates so much. We're going yeah, multiverse, what's the, what's baby. What's the true canon of Spartacus to show now, and now the House of Asher's coming out? What is the true canon? The, the oh, true right. canon Cannon's is bullshit. this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. This you're, you're, anyway, no. Steve, your final thoughts on this episode. I know we got to wrap it up quick. In, incredible episode, absolutely fantastic. There are there, like I would argue, this episode is maybe flawless. Like it accomplishes absolutely everything that it needs to accomplish in like a a high level way. Uh, it, it's great. Everything with the gladiators is fantastic. Everything with Caesar is fantastic. Uh, Crassus continues to be an incredible incredible villain in, in this show and eventually he and Spartacus will actually fight each other at yeah, some and point. No, one thing I will mention, just two quick things. Uh, what One of my favorite moments of this episode is when um, Sp uh, Crixus and Spartacus are having like you know, their little breakdown there at the very end and they cut to Caesar between the swords and he's just smiling like he's like oh yeah <laughs> i've got this oh, it's such a great shot um and one thing that Stephen tonight said that uh why they made the decision to put caesar in here is because they needed to have a way in which the villains would interact with the with the um uh, slaves at some point in time um, and throughout the course of the season and they felt this was the best way to sort of insert Caesar as kind of like the guy who's stirring the pot in there. Perfect choice. Absolutely perfect choice. A plus for this episode. Next week we talk about episode 5 uh, we're starting at the beginning of the end here uh, Blood Brothers is episode five so can't wait for that and who knows maybe we'll get to talk about it at the uh, intended recording time maybe yeah, yeah, probably maybe. not okay but... guys that's the end of a recording session you know what happens on the next hand oh that's true that's true okay do we have anything else we can say about this episode while we wait for the next hand it's uh, awesome like the, everything about it's great Good times. The decimation, like, it's another one of those budgetary things, but uh, I believe, like, because, like, oh, like, the show was like, okay, well, we only have the budget to decimate, like, 50 of you guys, and really it's only going to be about, like, 20 of you that, that's going to that, that's gonna be on camera. But I think historically uh, it was something like 500 men were actually put through the decimation because it, it was a much bigger force that lost. It was like 10,000 or something was in a... Legion or something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, like the, but, uh, but it was like the ones who actually, who actually turned and fled, like the actual group. It was something, like it was like a, like a thousand men, and then five hundred of them were decimated or something like that. That's, can you imagine it, it was much, living in this? It was time. much more than five. Like, can you imagine living in this time period? It just seems like it'd be the worst, worst ever. <laughs> I cannot imagine. All right, All right. here it goes. Here we go, guys. Going all in. Uh, Ronan, did you get you? You won the last one, right? Finally. Yeah, the the oh, the, yeah. the only time I've ever won this. <laughs> I feel like you've won it before. We should have no, kept. No, if I, we'd I, been I, thinking ahead, we would have kept track. But I'm not. I'm not. 
I'm not looking no, into that. I assure you, that's the only time I've ever won doing this. It's always been it's always been one of you. That's every once in a blue moon, one of these randos, uh, acts like uh, who sticks around is one. But typically, it's you or Steve who wins it. Okay, all in. We we believe in the heart of the go. cards. How Come much on, time guys. is left on the recording? Oh, we got we got like ten minutes. It's fine. Oh, okay. Well, you were rushing us through that, Steve. Yeah, because you we guys were, like... were going to use that ten minutes if I didn't fucking tell you to move. <laughs> Ronan's well, like... You... Uh, Ronan was like... There's a whole segment where Ronan was like, I know we skipped over this because we don't have time. Now let's talk about it. Like, did we met? Did we magically <laughs> gain more time? No! That's not how time works. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> We have nothing to say, because it's true. Everything I said oh, is correct. Oh, God. That guy's got two queens. Oh, come no. on, kings. Oh, that's kings. bullshit. Kings. Kings. I need kings. Seven, I need six. Bullshit. I need kings. I need okay, there's a ten. Oh, I got a six. Give I got a ten. I need, I need a king. King or one ten. King six. or ten does it. There's a seven. King or ten. I've got two pairs. No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, boo. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. boo. Eat my fucking ass, boo. you cocksuckers. All right. So, so do we agree that Ronan's not allowed to bitch about this this thing that we do yes. anymore? He can never well, bitch again. Yeah. Now that it's happened, now that I've won two of them, I can. I now have less, substantially less room to stand on. You know what? All right, I was, Matt, Matt busted out, otherwise I was going to go all in again. But that's fine. That's the end of the episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, join us next week for episode five, where the show just continues to be awesome.